Let's do it. So uh, years before we were uh, uh, we were struggling with uh, things like not enough fruit load, uh, too much fruit load, and uh, we had oscillating uh, fruit load, and that's why also not not constant yield. So we thought what we could do better. So we decided to split the whole growth process into pieces, uh, in organs, leaf, stem leaf petiole fruit and then let's see what we can do about it and what's the mathematics behind uh, from that we also looking at the last years we had looked at the light use efficiency and we have decided what we could do with it is there anything what we can do from the what we can calculate from the past to create a future and then we created the production plan it's quite easy you stick to the plan and you must actually reach your goal uh, then for decision support system, we will not go, we're not going to focus on it. So we made understandable metrics. So this is light use efficiency. This is water use efficiency, uh, water uptake and water uh, use efficiency. Uh, there's also some calculations visualization, which needs to be done to get it, uh, get it understandable for people. And also then a checking system uh, to check whether you are aligned with your uh, plan. And then for the for the uncertainties and things what we wanted to find first one was a uh, fruit abortion the underlying mechanics what causes the fruit abortion because we you now can that, yeah. we can distinguish two types of fruit abortion one of them is a uh, uh, what we believe is water related which happens in head and head of the plant of the and then and was on another ones are uh, energy related which happens later on when already fruit is set which happens until day seven after fruit have been flowering also the heating influence of the heating pipes and things like this but we're going to skip at this in this uh, webinar and probably there will be another one so the steps that we have done so first we split the plant uh, we split the yield components and uh, there's quite simple yield components like uh, development speed of the plant plant density fruit load and average fruit weight so we can affect only those four uh, development speed we can uh, influence with the temperature plant density this, so this is predetermined when you plant Fruit load is what you can do with uh, uh, with your pruning and the average fruit weight. So if you can grow from 300 to 500 grams, you're lucky. If you have a limited fruit weight, then you need to stick to your specs. And for that one, you need to have more uh, more sophisticated calculation, how many fruits you can keep per plant. So what we've done, we took the standard model from Wageningen University, and then we split it what we can measure and what we are interested in. So we are interested in the fruits. So what we can do about it. We split the model. We took out the part what we could affect. So we cannot measure roots, but we can measure leaf, stem, and fruits. So how we can measure, we can weigh them. We can do optics. Yeah, we can do with uh, computer vision, but it uh, requires more skill to program it. And there is also errors with the light and all those things. But yeah, by the weight, we can measure leaf, stem, and fruits because this is the plant. Of, uh, this is part of the plant which is hanging, and it, as it is hanging on a scale, so you can see what's happening with it. Uh, and instead of dry matter, what would be really hard to uh, calculate, we just uh, defined that we're going to measure the fresh weight and then also to see the fresh weight dis uh, distribution over the time. So from all those things, what we can measure, what we can influence. So stem. Yeah, we can influence the diameter, but the uh, influence of the stem diameter will not be so much on uh, total growth. But what we can do, we can uh, take off the leaf if it's necessary, and we can prune the fruits. To prune the fruits, we need to determine how many fruits we can keep per plant, so, and uh, actually how much we can grow the plant, how much biomass we can create. Uh, we took the calculation for uh, we we made the calculation how much would weigh the ideal standard plan for us and for in our means with our 250 gram fruit we can afford to have 12 fruits by plant and by knowing um, each individual fruit weight on the plant we can calculate what would be the ideal weight of the fruits on the plant so this is the generative part of the plant what we need to keep we also know that fruits are growing faster when they approach the harvest stage. So as bigger is the fruit, as stronger is the thing, sink of the fruit. And as the, there are more fruits on the plant and they are making the bigger mass, they also create the faster growth. 
So from that one, we calculated our 12 fruits. We have weighed about 900 grams on the plant. Uh, then we also made the calculation on the generative, uh, on the vegetative part, like leaves, uh, leaf petiolus and stem. So in our case, we are keeping between 18 to 21 leaf on the plant. From our measurements that we have made previously, we see that the yeah, leaf is not usually getting heavier than 25, 30 grams. So we assume 25 grams would be some our average for our standard good plant. And uh, the total weigh, uh, total weight of leaves will be around 200 grams on the plant. And the uh, stem, yeah, just calculating from the circumference and the length of the stem, so one meter of the stems, stem, depending on the stem diameter, makes from 40 to 80 grams. So if you put it all together, we see what is our total plant. One plant, 200 grams of leaves, 150 grams of uh, stem, and from 900, around 900 grams of fruit, which is ranging from 750 to 1,000 grams per on a plant because we're picking or daily or be daily. So that means uh, the, the fruit weight on the plant is oscillating. So the standard plant is 1.25 kilos. And then you can multiply with the amount of plants put on the scales. What we also have seen in previous years uh, from our previous experience is that uh, you can kind of split plant in a two ways of development. One is the st statistic and statistic behavior of the vegetative part because the development of new organs is really depending on the temperature. It is not related on the energy availability, but is depending on the temperature. So as that's also done the, done the research in Wageningen University when they have shown that there's clearly matching pattern, higher temperature, more nodes per week. Also there. And also what we see that the leaves are, and stems are consuming the energy, doesn't matter what. So they just, uh, they will do it on, uh, on expense of the fruit, uh, of the fruits. And then there's also the dynamic part. So your fruit, as more fruits you have, as more in the beginning they will attract assimilates and later on they will do the abortions. Uh, they will, yeah, because of the shortage of assimilates, you will get the fruit abortion of already set fruits. So that's why I call it dynamic and keep both of those parts in balance. You need to calculate yeah, how much energy you need for them. So for that one, for well, that one, we didn't have done a calculation, just a simple one. Probably most of you have done calculations in your greenhouses or in areas where you do mostly the same. They are, are mostly the same. Uh, we know, oh, sorry. We know how much light we have per week, so we are not limited on light. We have not less than 200 uh, moles per week. We know our historical light use efficiency, which is 20 grams per mole. So that means that per week, if everything is fine, we should be picking not less than 4.2 kilos. If we will have more light, we will pick more kilos. So from that one, knowing that uh, we have 250 gram fruit, which is our average what we should have, we divide 4.2 kilos with 250 grams. So we get that we need to pick around 16 fruits per square meter per week. <clears throat> Based on that, we know, uh, knowing how many plants we have and we have 3.56 plants we know how much fruits we need to pick per plant so we divide 16 by 3.56 we get to average minimum point, uh, five fruits we need to pick per week then knowing from history uh, what is our plant development speed based on the uh, temperature we need we know how many new leaves we're going to make per week and based on that we can adjust our uh, pruning scheme so we cannot pick more than fruits per week even if we will get seven leaves per week, we cannot pick more because we will be light limited. So knowing that, we know that per week we are adding five fruits and taking five fruits off from the plant. So what we can do with it? Uh, we can calculate what will be the weight what we will generate over the week. And we can also calculate what will be the dis biomass distribution of uh, what we will generate per week as we see that uh, from our light sum what we have we can generate 4.4 kilos of fruit but it will also co-generate 600 grams of uh, plant biomass which is uh, leaves and stems so that's uh, inevitable it will it's gonna happen but then if we look at the 
distribu- uh, uh, fresh weight distribution between those organs, we see that only 12% of all energy uh, of of whole biomass goes in the vegetative part, and 88 goes in a, 88% goes in the generative part in the fruit. So in total, we must generate five kilos per square meter of biomass. So, and knowing this, we already can start to think what how we can use it. So, uh, if it's a uh, five kilos per week, so per square meter, how much it's going to be per day? So, it's around seven hundred and twenty grams of fruit per day. Well, that's basically actually I need to do the math. Yeah, we need to grow around seven hundred and twenty grams per day. How we can do it? We can weight it, so we can measure. Uh, we in the greenhouse we have installed. Uh, we have installed just a moment. I would roll. We have installed scales, uh, two separate scales in two ends, and then we put a steel bar. And on that steel bar, we have hanged 16 separate plants. So 16 because it fits in the length of the trellis. We have 4.5 meter trellis, and we put the 16 plants, and it's also quite good representation. Uh, it represents 4.5 square meters of, of the greenhouse, and uh, also in scientific research you have seen that there are 16 plants and they do the destructive measurement on part of them but uh, for us it's uh, the easiest way where to go how to go uh, just let me quickly move forward with it and then we have defined what would be the lower boundary of weight what we would like to see on a on the scales and the higher boundary so if you see this graph uh, on the on this one um uh, the lower part. This is the lowest weight. What should be? So that means that one plant will uh, weigh one kilo. So that means if it happens that from each plant we have picked one fruit, then the whole weight on the scale shouldn't be lower than sixteen kilos because of its sixteen plants. And that means that we one fruit is away, and the rest of the fruits are going to grow. Uh, if it's lower, then it means that uh, we don't have sufficient uh, fruit load, or it's not uh, quick enough growing fruit load. So. It, it, it can happen that there is a fruit abortion on those plants and the red uh, the red line on top and this is the upper boundary if we go above that boundary that something goes wrong or we have too high fruit load or our leaf is getting bigger or our or our leaf but they always get getting bigger uh, in the red figures you, you can see the weekly yield that we have had so far starting from a uh, picking week and uh, with the green uh, numbers, you see the fruit load. What was per square meter? Yeah. Now we see that uh, in last weeks we went out from our uh, we we went above our higher weight boundary due to the two reasons. One, our fruit load is increasing, so rapidly we jumped to thirty-seven uh, fruits, what was measured yesterday. But also we see that. Uh, our uh, leaf length is increasing and also leaf petiole is increasing so we see this uh, pattern every year in october uh, after october our leaf petiole and leaf length start to shrink and uh, in end of march our plant is start to get bigger so we basically are uh, decreasing bigger leaves than we have done uh, than we had in the winter time so if you know your lower and upper boundary it can give you the good estimate where you are compared with where you should be. Yeah. If you are lower at weight, you might be in in, in trouble. Like um, what we see here uh, is uh, we was too optimistic on how much fruits we can keep per square meter. Uh, that's why in the first week we were not picking small fruits and we were keeping them for next week. But then, uh, let me remove this one. Then uh, we saw that we have stagnating fruits which are uh, at the same size and they are not growing further so we were picking but still there was stagnating fruits which were not growing uh, bigger so we decided to pick all the stagnating ones on a thursday just uh, uh, when we saw that we are overloading the plant and then with the uh, Andres, can i ask something uh, i would i would appreciate if you would write uh, questions in chat and later on i'll answer at the end of the presentation yeah, that would be really good. Um, then we have done some uh, mistakes with the uh, with pruning here at uh, two weeks before, and it 
uh, that gives us a result two weeks after. So we took fruits, which was uh, before flowering. So we didn't know whether they will be aborted or not, but we get also some fruit abortion due to the or shortage of water or overheating. So we got aborted the small fruits in the head of the plant. But later on, we kept all, yeah, as I believe, in balance. And uh, so far, we are uh, way better performing than all years before. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, what we do in a, on a daily basis, we are uh, writing down. For now, we're writing down manually. Uh, with a green bar is represented which was harvested as a fruit. With a blue bar is represented what was harvested as a leaf. So this gives us uh, insights of uh, total biomass. So the distribution of total biomass generated from uh, from day one of the organ until the end of the of the period. And then we put it all together in one Excel graph, and from that one we can see how much of the fresh weight went in one or another organ. So as as we were keeping plant in balance most of the time. Uh, we see that our distribution is actually close to what we have been predicting, that uh, we will get around 88% of the total weight in the fruit and rest in the leaves. Uh, now we have seen that last few days we are going above those 88% uh, of the total mass in the fruit, so that gives us, uh, uh, that's kind of uh, scratching our minds that uh, probably we're doing something wrong with the, uh, with the all fruits which are now on the plant and we could get uh, some fruit abortion in the coming weeks but that one we will see uh, uh, on friday so i do two uh twice a week i do visit to see how it's going uh, but the pattern is there so then we decided uh, what should we do with data because we're gathering not only the weight but also the temperature also the humidity light sum and all possible what we can measure uh, when we plotted everything together then we were looking for the correlations, uh, what is things which are correlating. Uh, when we look at the, uh, in the red, um, marked with red, annotation where it is, like those ones, uh, here you see uh, co-correlation of biomass gained with something else. So we don't see really clear pattern. So this would be the co-correlation that you see that one one uh, one thing is influencing another, but we don't see it really if we don't look at the uh, at the plant weight. So when we did the same correlation with the starting weight of the plant, so we have average plant weight over the twenty four hour period, and from from that one we are measuring, yeah, and and also we are measuring how much biomass we have gained yeah, from point A to point B. What was the starting point at the beginning what, uh, and what was the end point at the end? Different is the biomass produced. And then we plot it against the uh, average weight of the plant over all this period. And then we see already something what you could use for, uh, let's say, uh, you see some covariance that the uh, actual plant weight is... Uh, is the starting point of the biomass what you're going to produce, which is also quite logical if you have a fruit load. And because the fruits are growing way quicker than uh, uh, than the leaves, then uh, as heavier the plant is, as more uh, production it's going to bring you. If we zoom in, then we see that uh, we don't see clear plot, uh, uh, clear correlation with light so far and with temperature. So this one is uh, 24 average temperature. It's not so influencing, yeah, maybe there is some correlation also with the light, but the light is only secondary factor at this moment. Yeah, this is the energy what you could uh, convert into the production uh, in a product, but you need to have a potential in which to convert. If you don't have uh, fruits where to put the energy, well, energy will be wasted. It will be accumulated as the sugar in the leaves and the uh, sugar in, uh, in the plant, but it will not go anywhere what we could sell. If we would sell cigars from uh, cucumber leaves, that would be great, but uh, it's not the case. Uh, but then what we also did is uh, we plot, yeah, over the long time we plotted plant weight uh, in red uh, as a red line and uh, biomass gained per day with a green line. Then we also see this really nice correlation. And if you put, uh, yeah, 
how to say it yeah, when you plot how much biomass you've gained per per unit of plant weight then you see that there's quite nice uh, correlation with it and it uh, leaves only 20 percent for explanation with other factors than like light temperature so with temperature what you can do you can create more organs or less organs and you can uh, determine how quick the organs on the plant gonna grow as higher its temperature is, as quicker will be development and that that we were using at those weeks when we had those four kilos at that moment we were we was at higher 24 average temperature versus light because we had lower fruit load and we could afford uh, develop plant faster so then we can cope up with the uh, with so basically we have faster fruit development and also faster plant development which gives us more fruits so in a few days we get back to the normal fruit load <clears throat> so what we can what we can do with all it uh, then we also need to look uh, at uh, not only a 24 average and uh, not 24 hour period but also on a day period this graph represents a uh, 24 hour period uh, divided in a 10 minute slots uh, in this case is 10 something now in one hour slots and there you see also daily uh, sinusoid pattern of the growth in the morning the growth is more rapid during the day when the sun is out it is way low uh, way slower and is bigger variance than in the morning and then in the afternoon usually you had uh, something what you could call standard uh, where I'm bringing all the story is that with knowing your uh, fruit load knowing your biomass knowing this uh, pattern you also you already have something what to look at uh, to optimize your growth and uh, you could do something what we are doing that we actually are calculating the biomass growth trend and we plot it against the temperature relative humidity and other factors like irrigation so basically what we can measure we can compare how our plant was developing was developing during uh, during the day we see really clear uh, fluctuations in growth uh, depending on the uh, relative humidity so when the humidity drops also the plant is drying out and also we see that uh, sun is not our friend in the most of the cases if we cannot keep the humidity uh, because of overheating of the greenhouse we need to ventilate and because of that we are losing humidity and we are losing the speed of growth and in those days uh, our total growth over 24 hour period is lower and even in consecutive periods if we have let's say four sunny days in a row we are not able to utilize all the yield potential what we might have yeah we have a lot of light we have a lot of uh, fruit load but the um, biomass gained is lower than in the cloudy days when we're using mostly artificial light which is also quite uh, logical because you need to uh, you need to exert excess energy and you exert it as a transpiration which eats up some sugars uh, what we do we filter off you know, we filter off the uh, noisy picture what you have because if you look at the graph uh, uh, on this one um, first one what we do is uh, we take off all the noise which is uh, this is harvest this is something uh, done with the plants uh, I don't know what this is so we take it off and then we get a clear trend uh, which is represented by the green line like oh sorry like this one this is a clear trend summed up yeah, how much we uh, how much we grow per, per unit of time uh, then a brown line is uh, representing the averaging of uh, of actual plant weight so the the growth strain how what it is because if you see it like this was as a green line this is a really unclear picture what's happening so then you need to squeeze the graph and you don't see the clear picture there is a uh, multiple uh, factors which are influencing one of them is um, a scale uncertainties which you need to filter off somehow and if you do some averaging over the period of time and taking in account uh, previous periods and future periods then you can uh, squeeze it in re one really nice picture where you see how your plant is behaving 
and that one can be so graph like this sorry like this it can be used in a real time uh, for spotting where the problem was why your plant haven't grown as you have planned uh, because you usually have some kind of expectations what you're going to get at the end of the day here you can see it in real time rather than uh, after four days when it's too late uh, you can see that uh, like in afternoon we had the uh, i don't know what happened there but uh, you had the negative growth that means the plant actually was drying out uh, if you could afford it in tomato in cucumber my experience shows that uh, in a period when the plant is drying out later expect a problem or the or you get aborted fruit or you get uh, brewy cop or things like this and uh, yeah based on what you use based on what scales you use what algorithms for calculation you can actually get quite much information out of it uh, also what we do at uh, for now is we are comparing day to day uh, with historical events uh, we can compare or let's say to normal normalized plant or uh, what was actual happening so this is the seven day history no six day history compared with uh, the plant status today red line represents uh, current state and uh, six other uh, bar lines are representing previous days well do not to graph too busy there is only a few days on but uh, what you can do you can uh, benchmark how your plant is acting compared to other days and if you see that there is some uh, deviations then you can dig in deeper in information and find why it happened like uh, uh, for instance uh, here here you see the spraying it seems the plant is drying out but actually this is the water which is drying out from the plant that's why you have kind of uh, yeah, biomass loss uh, it was sunny day so that's why we had a uh, quite flat growth it, after the cloudy period sun came out for a few hours and at that period plant was growing way way slower and here the clouds rolled in so you can get explanation how your plant is acting uh, and how it is responding to one or another climate parameter uh, moving forward also what we are doing now is uh, on the real time we are monitoring water uptake and now there is still some uh, adaptations needed so we really clearly need to see what goes in the substrate what goes out uh, you cannot just uh, do it by uh, by weighing the substrate because you get calculation errors like here uh, it, it it is uh, due to the averaging of yeah, when you do the irrigation so that substrate uh, is uh, substrate weight is rapidly increasing and then during the drain it's uh, decreasing more rapid than it is decreasing during the water uptake so for that one you use some averaging and for that one you need to uh, you basically you need to measure what you irrigate in and then you need to do some other calculation but already this gives us quite good insight at what period of time how much water we are uh, uh, we are taking up and what is also good that we can measure not only the actual water uptake we can measure it over the unit of time and also we can calculate net water uptake because we know how much biomass we have produced over that period of time so this uh, the uh, the plant yeah, the water which is embedded in the plant can be uh, excluded from the transpirated water uh, so we are already in half of the we're almost on time uh, some conclusions what we can do with uh, plant weighing uh, basically we can see way more than we can see with naked eye because naked eyes can lie uh, here I made the photos uh, mostly most of the time in the same angle of the same row and there you can see that actually you cannot spot with your eyes how much your plant is weighing uh, you might you might be misled by the plant look if you count fruits and if you kind of estimate what is the fruit side then you will be quite close to what's the weight but uh, if you look here the plant here doesn't look uh, heavier than plant here yeah, or here but it's due to the fruit yeah, fruits you don't see leaf you see because of the area so uh use uh, using by using scales you know the status of your plant you know the current state where it is now uh, also by using scales you can find uh, you can spot the stagnant fruit uh, like here we had the 
three to four fruits at the same size, which were not developing faster and they were starting to eat the sugars after, from the top fruits. So you can spot it and you can take it off. If you are experienced enough, you can do it also without, with, uh, without weighing the plant. But uh, uh, all this project is because we don't have the experienced growers. So we need to give some tools how to do better than you can without experience. Uh, another thing what you can do is uh, you can spot where you don't have enough fruit load. Uh, your weight usually is lower. Uh, your uh, growth is not as quick as it should be if you have enough fruit. And basically you're producing, uh, instead of uh, norm, which is 720 grams, you're producing 680 grams. So those 40 grams actually you can spot at the end of the day. Also during the day if you do accumulated growth, the square meter. So in those days when you have uh, not enough fruits, you can uh, speed up with the temperature and then then cope, uh, then uh, compensate the loss of the fruits. Sorry. And uh, yeah, you can spot in real time what's happening with your plant according to uh, how it reacts on the climate. As long as it's not Sunday and you are not in the barbecue party. Like uh, there was, yeah, and your climate will be as good as your climate computer. So this company doesn't have so sophisticated climate computer and it's not easy to make the right settings. And here is uh, settings after the rainy days when the sun comes out and you have a uh, wind, when it's open, when it's closed, when it's open, when it's closed. And then you also see the plant weight is going in the same direction where the humidity goes. So if you're sitting at the computer or you get alarm, well, you can implement things like alarms and, and whatever you want, as long as you get data, and then you can react before it uh, hits your pocket. And then uh, how we could, uh, how we can steer based on uh, what we see on scales is that uh, although the vegetative part is making up 28% of the plant weight, it's only doubles up uh, it doubles up per week, so it's 300 grams producing something like around, uh, 350 grams producing around 67, 700 grams. Oops, I'm sorry. 350 grams is producing 600 to 700 grams per week of vegetative weight, which is uh, doubling up its own weight. While the fruit, which is uh, making 72%, is actually almost five times uh, multiplicating its weight. So uh, the biomass gain was will be mostly shown as uh, fruits and every slowdown in the biomass gain will be most likely caused by the slowing down of the fruits because of the scaling factor and uh, for that one uh, without using scales you will not be able to see that something is wrong until it's too late so in three days you see that uh, your fruits are not growing if you're not going greenhouse every day in a couple of times a day in the same row but, but with this one uh, with, uh, with weighing the plants you can see it immediately or at the end of the day and you can do some uh, measures for the next day but there is a uh, one major drawback uh, all this works only if your crop is uniform and if the situation on scales is representing the general pattern in the greenhouse so if uh, on scales, everything will be perfect, but greenhouse will be total mess. Uh, it will doesn't. It will not help you, and another way around. So treat the plants on a scale the same as they are treated on a on a whole greenhouse, and especially it's good not to make the plant registration on the plants which are on the scales because the plant registration is affecting the growth. So keep those ones as a normal plants and just carry on. And plant registration not far from there. Um, also, it's good to measure. Uh, it's good to measure as a climate parameters next to those plants because then you can see the whole picture. What happens? You can see the light sum at that spot. You can see the temperature at that spot, and you can uh, see the influences of the heating tubes and things like this. So this will give the better knowledge of uh, what's possible, what's not. Um, yeah, that's um, that's it from the. From the presentation itself, uh, you can do a lot as long as you have scales. Uh, scales can be bought, scales can be produced, but uh, well, for sure you need to have them if you want to be. Well, if you are experienced grower, then probably not. But uh, if you're a comsi comsa like I am, so then scales help you a lot.
And now I think I'm going to switch to questions if I will find where the group chat is. Probably it's somewhere. You can find the chat button in the middle of the your screen at the bottom. Oh yeah, now I see. So now I see. Let's then go from the start. This is Janos. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, I have to to leave um, the the webinar uh, because I am going to have another meeting. Uh, can I uh, contact you later tomorrow or something? Yeah, no problem. All yeah. right. You know where Sorry. to find me. Yeah, sure. It was re really interesting. Thanks a lot, and uh, no have a good day. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. I see the question from AZ. It looks like steel bar is almost exactly under the lamp blocking the sunlight. Don't you think it may have a big influence on growth? Measured plant is actually, if we scroll back, then it's almost not the case. Yeah, maybe it is. Uh -huh. but, uh, yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. We never thought of it. But Philips could help us out because they made a light plan, was it? And that's it. I don't have any other questions. So that's good. Everything is clear. Is there any other question? Hans, you had one. No, uh, I was entering later. So I uh, was, had an additional question, but you already answered in your story. So it's clear for me now. OK. Uh, this session was more about to share the idea what you can do with scales. And I would really be glad if you can give me some feedback why you think is not uh, right and uh, what could be improved in it. So far, we see that for us, it works out pretty well. Uh, if we compare with the first year when, when uh, Grower really didn't know what to do, we was at 33 kilos at, uh, at uh, last Friday that we calculate in weeks. A uh, week after, when he changed the variety, he was plus two kilos at 35 kilos and uh, yesterday we had a look at where we are now we're at 43 kilos so with more precise growing you can do way more and uh, yeah it's uh maybe it's because of the luck who knows we would like to believe that it's because of uh, we did, did something right Andres, this is uh, Andy from Grodan. Um are you supporting this grower on distance or physical i am due to my curiosity yeah due to my curiosity i'm there every uh, twice a week mondays and fridays just to have a look on uh, what's happening on the plant but uh, uh, on a daily basis uh, i have a look on the data and i uh, support the grower i tell them yeah what i would change if i would be in his shoes mm -hmm. because what we do is uh, just uh, this is just the weights what I showed, but uh, besides that, we do also uh, show the trend. I also had a look on uh, what happens with your fruit. The misconception that uh, growing tube is influencing the fruit temperature is actually terribly wrong. Mm. But we look at the temperatures and the temperature influences, like the blue one here. Uh, this is a uh, and this is a grow tube, which is which is believed that it influences the fruit temperature. But if you scroll back in time, then uh, we see that uh, the fruit temperature actually remains close to the air temperature, despite the fact that the grow tube is on or off. So what only the grow tube does, it uh, creates the drag in between the plants. So you move the air more rapidly through the plants, and that's it. You also mentioned events with cycling as well. So you know, opening, closing, opening, closing. Yeah. So that I guess that's 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 event control, proportional ventilation, whatever. Uh, very interesting, very interesting. But uh, um, your climate can be as in greenhouse. Your climate can be as good as uh, as your climate computer. If I would be working there with Privo or Hogendor, then I could do way more advanced settings. But there is a like it's uh, okay. I will not name the brand, but it's a whether you have on or off, and then there is a boundary in between. So when it rapidly goes, the winds are going rapidly on. With the final stage so what you need to do you need to do fine tuning every day by hand and it's uh yeah i can see both uh, patrick and renee from Prever and hugendorn are present anyway so 
Yeah, that's also for you mentioned uh, both. <laughs> uh, but those are uh, the two major ones with who I ever worked. And uh, what I know that uh, both of them have been looking at the direction of uh, implementing the scales. And uh, what, is, I... what is missing in my concept still, I would like to have uh, uh, I would like to have a vision system on a fruit. So because then I could uh, I could put uh, I could actually more precise determine where the energy goes. Because if I can uh, estimate the fruit swelling, which can be done with the vision system, and Rene will agree with me because he's working with it. Uh, then I know where the energy goes. Mm. Andres, is a, a small question because thank you for the opening, Andrew. Um, what would be the first quick wins if you have seen, probably you, you had some open doors that you have learned from this, but where would you start in uh, having a quick win? Would it be heating adjustment, uh, venting adjustment? irrigation adjustment now when then we need to define on which about what we talk about uh, where we had this uh, zigzag mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this one yeah this one uh, was uh, ventilating due to the changing sun and due to the temperature and yeah. there already it was reaching 27 degrees in, inside of the greenhouse and uh, the lamps were not switched off so there was no influence put on switching off the lamps because uh, we have a problem that uh, uh, lamps are overheating still they are overheating so i would start with uh, switching off the lamps above 300 watts and <laughs> that would already help a lot and yeah. then also yeah. turning off the uh, heating and what uh, the specific of this greenhouse is also that we have uh, something which is mixing air inside we have a air and energy system which is uh, used only to mix uh, to drag the air from the top and uh, put it underneath and with that one uh, because of that we can switch off the heating pipes or at, yeah. at the sunny days so i would start with switching off the lamps switching off the heating and uh, making air circulation and then with yeah. ventilation well Hopefully our general problem is uh, too low humidity despite the fact that uh, it's cucumber. Yeah, our humidity is usually not above seventy percent, even in the nighttime. And also, the plant is transporting sufficient amount of water, but uh, it's uh, because of lack height of the cas. Yeah, it's uh, how you say it in English. I don't know. I know in Dutch. <laughs> sort of the leakage. The yeah, yeah the uh, leakage of the greenhouse. Yeah, it's not uh, isolated enough. Somehow, it's. Uh, the surface of the greenhouse versus uh, cubic meters of the greenhouse is small because we have a lot of side walls. It's a 3,000 square meter compartment with three walls open to the surroundings. Yeah, so in comparison, a lot of surface, yeah. yeah. So then it will be uh, quite some discovery still then to to simplify things towards uh like a sort of not so professional grower as that you are i'm not professional grower i must admit but uh i at least now i can measure uh, I think. now you see on the screen the graph from the uh, it's 24 hour hour period and then you see already now we have made adaptations that uh, we keep minimum pipe temperature over the night which also it's not really necessary as long as it's not snowing out but as it's april we never know is it going to be snow or not <laughs> because yesterday yeah. we had snow uh, still we, we switch off the uh we switch off heating pipes when we switch the lamps on and uh, then as long as we have sun outside uh, there is no grow pipe and also no uh, rail pipe so we consist on energy which is delivered by lamps and that also helped us to keep the humidity so because in the beginning we had uh, really fighting to keep the humidity in uh, with raising the day temperatures and uh, things like this then we start to cut off piece by piece. So we did one change every day uh, to uh, to optimize. We every day we uh, do something like this. We have a look on. Uh, it's actually the same graph. We take off which isn't what's not necessary, and then we have a look what we can do about it. Like uh, with humidity during the day uh, in the morning. 
we look what was the cause and uh, what we can do to change it. Uh, if you look what it is, 13th of April, you can scroll to 13th of April. You will not see much here, but we can see it if we open uh, what happened with light. And this is all made, uh, uh, it, it is all made because of necessity, not because uh, uh, it's some program. What is? I just write it uh, for myself so I can work with it. What we actually have far. I have here. 13th of April. And that's the beauty of Python. If you know Python, then you can do a lot. Programming itself is really easy. So if you look, tendency, what is this period? From 747. Then you just can zoom in and have a look what was wrong there. And basically nothing was wrong. It's just a random noise what we had in the growth trend. But the beauty of it is that you can scroll in, yeah, you can zoom in what was wrong. You cannot see it. <clears throat> and it actually all this appeared from uh, from the thing that I couldn't explain. Uh, I couldn't explain yield, what we have got based uh, on uh, light data, on the climate data, what we had there. Yeah, we had temperature, relative humidity, it all seems kind of okay, uh, but at the end you don't get expected kilos, so then something must be wrong over this period of the growth. In cucumber it's easier, it's 14 days and there the generative uh, part is way higher than the vegetative. I expect that with cherry tomato it will be more difficult. Andres, right now you're, you're using your experience to make the interpretation and the analysis. Is, is it planned? develop almost a decision support system so in its very simplest form it could say humidity too low but it wouldn't you know then the next stage would be tell you well how to make it higher you know what i mean without compromising temperature or blah 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 it, it, is that on your radar uh that's the room what i leave for uh for uh Riva for for grodan for whatever who is making it because uh that's not my that's not my task. Uh, my task is uh, to, I'm making this to help me, not to, uh, to yeah. help others. Now the idea is to share with others what I have made and they can use it. Like I know that Rene now is really busy with the autonomous greenhouse. Yeah. And uh, well, we, unfortunately we didn't succeed and maybe that's good. Now we have more time to focus on this, but uh, yeah, the, the general idea can be used of course uh, for, uh, for uh, saying what to do because uh, it's not really hard to say if your biomass is yeah. not increasing at the state what you would like to increase because you can calculate what should mm -hmm. be the biomass increase because you know your current state and you know which is the development speed based on the current state of the weight then you can uh, put it uh, versus temperature what you have and then you can say well now your temperature is too high versus your light for the given state and you should decrease your temperature to decrease your temperature yeah. You need to decrease the, that's the thing that's the way of thinking what i have behind uh, what i will make for myself but correct i mean that's in its simplest form you know the temperature is too low but it doesn't tell you how to make it higher whether it's by heating or less vent or whatever you know what I mean? for that one it is not too difficult to make at least yeah, yeah, uh, but, what but i see simple. you know humidity too low but it, it doesn't tell you how to make it higher uh, with the with that one is uh, difficult because what yeah, you can yeah. do you can squeeze the vents or transpirate more or put the fog system on or Correct. cooling from outside. But yeah, if you yeah. don't have those possibilities, well, if you have defined possibilities, what to do, then you can predict what to do. If you yeah. don't have any, like we have a fog system, but despite the fact that we have it, we actually refuse to switch it on because it's uh, not helping us. It is not increasing the temperature. It is uh, for it's not increasing humidity. It's decreasing the temperature, mm. and we have another bad factors from it. Uh, Andres uh, Spoliak from Brotec. Um, I, I know also Gatlin. They have um, they have this air and energy system from Amalan, the dehumidification. Yes, so you see a conflict between have fighting against low humidity, and then you have uh, this air and energy system running. 
same time, or what? Do, what have you done for that? Luckily, we have a split system that uh, it can run, or in combination, the heat exchanger with the humidifier, uh, together with the with the blowing tubes underneath. But now we are using just to circulate the air inside of the greenhouse, and we are pushing air from the top to the end of the greenhouse, and then sucking in with the tubes underneath and spreading it all over. Okay. So it's not uh, on full. So it's still running, but just but only for air circulation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because otherwise we will hit uh, even lower humidity. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. But that seems to be a problem. It's just like they have the mist mist system running in the top of the greenhouse and their air and energy in the bottom. That's little in. Yeah, but uh, air and energy is off. Okay. It was yeah, good that... investment, uh, but <laughs> not for this user case. No, oh, no, no. That's just little. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Well, uh, we have five minutes left. Um, if there is any questions, then feel free to ask. If not, then uh, I would suggest that uh, we all go to our things what we need to do. I okay. really appreciate your time that uh, yeah, you you show up and uh, you had a look. Uh, if yeah. there is any questions, then... Uh, I have a question, uh, Andres, Bart Eckhout from Vlier. Uh, hi. Hi. A very great presentation. It's very learnful for me as well. Um, my question was, uh, controlling the humidity is more important than I expected. You showed this in this presentation. Um, how are they normally controlling this? By uh, putting moisture in the greenhouse? Yeah, normally, um, normally you have vice versa situation is uh, when your humidity is too high and you need to use heating to get rid of humidity. That's uh, clear. We have a, I don't know, it's really special greenhouse because everything is different there and it, it gives us uh, opportunity to evolve. Um, yeah, we transpirate four liters per square meter per day. Still, humidity is too low. Uh, yeah. In other greenhouses, uh, they are just working at a way higher humidity. So in cucumber, it's believed that 80% is the optimal humidity. And then if you go above 85, then you start to ventilate. If you go below 75, then you close the vents and uh, switch off the heating. Uh, yeah. Either of those. But yeah, that's. Uh, I would not put this situation that we have because it's quite a different situation from others that you have in Netherlands. We have less okay. steering tools. Do you know Van Dijk heating in uh, the Netherlands? Maybe. I don't recall them straight I ahead. Said, I, I sent a presentation to you uh, during this. Uh, yeah. They are uh, circulating the outside air also in combination. They're using yeah, the that, outside That's what we have. Air. But outside, yeah. usually you have drier air than it's inside. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, even so the... it's, uh, sorry, it's, it's very similar to the Amalan system. They yeah. have energy. Yeah. I, I have a customer in, in Norway also with a Van Dijk system, and it's it's actually very very much the same. So we yeah. have uh, we have similar system, but help sucking in from outside drier air will not help us much because yeah, although relative yeah. humidity outside might be higher, but uh, the absolute humidity in cube of air will be lower, and we will be decreasing the humidity. But and and adding uh, moisture. Air, what they normally use for cooling, uh, that are also raised uh, uh, humidity. But then it's, it's gonna, uh, uh, then it's gonna decrease. Uh, then it's gonna decrease the humidity at the fruit level, and then I need to heat up the fruit. So then I'll have a negative yeah. gradient. My head will head of the plant will be warmer than the bottom, and that's the yeah. problem with cubo greenhouses. Uh, what I have seen, at least in Russia, that they use HPS at the top. It's uh, way warmer than at the bottom. And they are yeah. pull it, pushing in cooler air from the bottom. And then you see that uh, your fruit load is increasing. If normally, like in Finland, uh, in an old uh, uh, greenhouse, I see uh, seven, seven, eight trusses on the plant because they use a lot of heating from the bottom. When you put yeah. air and energy, you see nine to ten trusses because the temp they, they have uh, problems to uh, accumulate temperature some. Because when yeah. the fruit is gradually growing, it's getting to cooler and cooler and cooler uh, environment. Yeah. yeah so uh, it's not so easy to control humidity in a in a uh, in a proper way, uh, only you, by heating and ventilating a I little bit. Or... You, no, I would tell you a bit different. It's really difficult to control humidity if uh, uh, if your plant 
cannot recover the amount of humidity what she, what it needs to recover in the air. Yeah. In, a, yeah. in normal greenhouse, when your surface area to uh, to outside uh, surface area to cubic meters is smaller, then you're also then also uh, uh, water loss through the construction of the greenhouse is smaller. Yes, yeah, like yeah. so it's a leakage of the greenhouse yeah. is smaller. And yeah. now we have even with the closed vents, we have uh, with closed vents with 3.5 liters per square meter transpiration, our humidity inside of the greenhouse uh, is something like 65, 70 percent during the daytime. Yeah. When it should be way more higher. We have uh, enough transpiration versus uh, amount of light that we have supplied. Yeah, it's believed that it must be between 110 mil, uh, to 150 milliliters per mole of light. So that rule we are. Uh, we are. Yeah. Matching too, but uh, it's not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you should have more. Uh, so in this case, you should uh, have more higher humidity outside in order to to put it up. But uh, so in areas where you have more humidity, like uh, for example, uh, for example, the tropics or something like that. Yeah, you could do, but uh, yeah, you need to find the way how to add humidity. Yeah. So when you add it from the top, uh, in this green, the problem is too low ceiling. Uh, when we use the fog system, the droplet cannot uh, dissipate in air. The water droplet cannot dissipate in air before it hits the leaf surface. So we have uh, drops on the leaves, which is causing later on fungus development. So for that one, we yeah. decided that we're going to skip the, using the fog system. Fog system you could use at some extent uh, to increase humidity. Yeah. But again, the basic problem here is that uh, surface versus uh, volume. Yeah. At the same time, in a greenhouse with tomatoes next to it, where is only two walls open to outside and where is one hectare, we have too high humidity and there we are ventilating. There we finding other ways how to get rid of humidity. So that's a unique situation what we have now. Yeah, understand. Okay, thank you. That's clear. So it's not so easy, but it's uh, really a trigger we it's, need to control it's doable. in the future. Now you yeah. see on the screen my contact details. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to write, call, whatever. Uh, as long as the uh, borders are closed, I stay in Latvia for a while. <laughs> Otherwise, I would be already gone <laughs> and doing something else. And yeah, they, uh, take care. Stay healthy. Thank you. Drink a lot of water, yes. wash your hands, and goodbye. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Andres, and last question. The, the session is recorded. Uh, are you also sharing the record with yeah, us? If uh, if it will be if it will be successful recording, <laughs> then it will be <laughs> shared. Because last time when I had recording, it was kind of uh, junk. But uh, we'll okay. see. If it will be it, if it will be successful, it will be or on Vimeo or in YouTube, but you can. Have a look at it later on. Okay, okay great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.